Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it, but small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. I am Pastor Bridget Ogbefo, inviting you to join me every Friday at 6 a.m. on the Tobago Inspirational Network for Gateway to Life, where we explore the Word of God through the help of the Spirit of God. Lunchtime just got better. Get Fed Delights brings you a taste of Africa. Located at the redeemed Christian Church of God Compound, Lowlands, Tobago. Visit us every Friday for your authentic Nigerian cuisine, such as jollof rice, fried plantains, Nigerian stew beef, fish, and chicken, pounded yam with ikusi, moi moi, chin chin, pepper soup, and so much more. Call us 752 3660 to place your order. Lunchtime just got better. Come and get fed. I bring you greetings in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You are welcome to Gateway to Life and I am Bridget Ogbefon and it's another beautiful day that the Lord has made that we will rejoice and be glad in. I'm so excited to be among the living at this time in life and I am sure you are as well. And we are in for another time with the Spirit of God to teach us through His Word by his grace in the mighty name of jesus let us pray father in the name of jesus i thank you for this beautiful day that you have made that is so awesome that i'm so grateful that you have made me and as many of these beautiful people that are watching right now and listening to the sound of my voice you have made us partakers you know to be among the living at this moment lord we are so grateful oh god i stand oh god in the forefront to herald your praise saying that you are worthy to be praised you are worthy to be exalted for sparing us for keeping us alive at such a time as this in these dark days that so many Evil things are happening in the midst of men. Lord, you still chose to cover us under, under your wings. Lord, I'm grateful. I say, accept my thanks and praises in the mighty name of Jesus. Sweet Holy Spirit, without you, I'm nothing. Without you, I can do nothing. Without you, your, the words that come out from my mouth will be mere babblings. Holy Spirit, I call upon you. Come and interpret your word today through me. In the mighty name of Jesus, I release myself to you to be used of you, that you will bring these words with clarity and with precision. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, O oh God, for Tobago Inspirational Network that you have been using, that you will continue to use them to the glory of your name, and the devil will continue to be put to shame where this institution, where this establishment is concerned in the name of Jesus. Thank you, eternal rock of ages. I'm confident that you have heard and the answers are released because I've prayed in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Again, you are welcome to Gateway to Life. I am excited, indeed very excited from the innermost part of me. And so today with the help of the Spirit of God, you know, I preached this message a few Sundays back. Many thanks to my pastor that gave me the opportunity and so I just felt that I should share it with you. Somebody out there may just be needing this word at this time. And I know that God's name will be glorified. And it's titled Rejoice Evermore. Rejoice Evermore. Rejoice Evermore. And I'm going straight to the text. First Thessalonians chapter 5 from verse 14 through 18. Look at what the scripture says. It says, now we exhort you. It says, now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good both among yourselves and to all men. Verse 16 says, Rejoice evermore. 
pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Of course, my verse of emphasis is verse 16. It says, rejoice evermore. And like I would have shared with them in church, I want to say again, that does not seem to me, that phrase, rejoice evermore, does not sound to me like, like, like something that is optional. Like it's something you, sh you, you should do when it's convenient. It, it comes to me more like a command, you know, telling you what to do, giving you instruction and exactly what to do. It says rejoice evermore. And so I quickly ran to my dictionary like I love to do, you know. And I looked at the word rejoice. It says it means to demonstrate good, great joy. The word rejoice means to demonstrate great joy. It means jubilation. It means, you know, the act of jubilating. And one other thing that we want to emphasize on in the course of this message is that the act of rejoicing, yes, we know it means to demonstrate great joy. Yes, we know it's the act of demonstrate of jubilation. It has to be intentional. When you look at it from the context, you know, of the text we just read, you have to deliberately make effort to rejoice and to put it into meaning with what we just read. You have to be intentional about demonstrating that great joy. <laughs> so it doesn't have to do with what happens around you, the good things that happen around you. You have to be intentional. In other words, even in the midst of bad situations. Let's continue. I'm sure that it will make more sense as we advance in the name of Jesus. You know, and I said for that, the Greek word for that word, the Greek word for that word rejoice is the word Cairo. C-A-I-R-O. Cairo. And it means to be glad. It means to be full of cheer. It means to be full of joy. And the word evermore means continuous or at all times. When you say something is evermore, it means it is unending, it is continuous, it is at, at all time. And so when you combine these words together, rejoice evermore, it tells me that it means to be full of joy at all times or continuously. And I like to quickly add the word intentionally. To be intentionally full of joy at all times. So that's the crux of what we'll be talking about today by the, by the help of the Spirit of God. And in the process of preparing for the message, there's a word that stands out. And that word is the word joy. And I would want us to dwell upon it, you know, for a bit. You know, joy, the word joy or rejoicing that we'll be talking about is different from the emotion called happiness. The emotion called happiness is triggered by the things that happen around you, especially positive things. The word happiness or the emotion happiness is triggered because you know, of, of, of certain things that happen around you, and then you express that emotion of being happy. But this rejoicing we are talking about, or this joyfulness we are talking about, is totally different from happiness, even though sometimes it is intertwined. When joy oozes from your inside, you are happy. But the difference between the joy that comes from your inside is that there's no particular thing tied to your reason of being joyful. In other words, joyfulness comes from your spirit, man. We will go further and see. So happiness is just an emotion that is triggered by things that happen around us. For example, you, you buy a new house, you are happy. You got promoted in your place of work, you are happy. You got an increase in pay, you are happy. 
and perhaps you 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 got married you know and the and the and the wedding ceremony was impeccable it was so beautiful it went you know so well you are happy even as parents you watch your children doing well in school and everything seemed to be going well you are happy that does not necessarily mean that you have joy because like I tell people, just by showing your emotion because of these beautiful things that happen around you, that emotion can also slide or change into being sad if things go wrong along the way. For example, you suddenly lost your job. You will be sad. Like we say around this side of this part of the world, and, and you, 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 you receive that tabanka, you will be sad your children not doing well for some reason you will be sad you're putting so much into your business into your job and it, it, it is like the situation of walking like an elephant and eating like an ant oh my dear brothers and sisters you will be sad so that quickly tells me that joy does not necessarily emanate from all these beautiful things that happen if you are not connected to the right source if you are not connected to the giver of joy himself joy on the other hand is not an emotion it is actually a fruit of the spirit galatians chapter 5 and verse 22 if you follow me on this program if you have been listening to me you will know that this is definitely one of my favorite scriptures i doubt if a month goes by without me using the scriptures galatians chapter 5 and verse 22 don't forget the point i just made that joy or rejoicing is actually a fruit of the spirit it is not anything that has to do with the things that happen in your emotions so joy is a fruit of the spirit and what does that tell you as you hear that it means that if you are not connected to Christ Jesus himself you may not be able to truly or correctly exhibit that fruit of the spirit called joy hallelujah look at what the Bible says in Galatians chapter 5 I remember I think a couple months gone I dwell a great deal on the fruit of the spirit you know taking them one after the other and I would have talked about you know joy as a fruit of the spirit so but let me look at what the Bible let, let's look at what the Bible says in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22 it says but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace long-suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness temperance against such there's no law you know when i was preaching this message in church a few sundays back i made an example with you know a mandarin where i come from we'll call it tangerine mandarin uh, 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 pardon me eh? i was told the name of the thing but i cannot remember it now when you take the fruit mandarin you see it have different section when you peel out the skin it has different sections, you know, that makes the fruit mandarin. I was told the name in church, but I cannot remember. And I told them in church, if you take one piece of that section of the mandarin, the mandarin becomes incomplete. If you go to a fruit store and you see a mandarin displayed and the skin off, not just that the skin off, but one of those um, um, sections in it gone, you wouldn't want to pick that because, it's, because it is incomplete. And so I made the instru illustration that the Bible used the word fruit of the spirit. It didn't say fruits of the spirit. It said fruit of the spirit. So I liken the fruit of the spirit to that mandarin. One section is love. One section is, is joy. One section is long suffering. So when you lack joy, it means that you do not have the fruit of the spirit. You, it means that the fruit of spirit, if you have any, is incomplete, is unpresentable, is unacceptable. And so, the only way you can have this joy we are talking about and remain rejoicing evermore is if you are connected to the source of that fruit of the spirit, the Holy Spirit himself. 
that is when you will come out like that whole mandarin that is complete that is presentable that is acceptable hallelujah i hope you're following me this morning or whatever time you may be watching so the true source of joy is christ jesus himself in order for you to rejoice evermore you must be plugged in into him that cannot be overemphasized because if you are not plugged into Christ Jesus what you will have at best is happiness and happiness is tied to your emotions and your emotions could swing to any direction at any time especially when things are not going too well I know back home then when I was growing up they used to show a soap opera that is titled The Rich Also Cry. In other words, the rich even in, in all that they have, they will still go through situations that will make them express emotions, cry, that will make them sad. But I've come to tell you today that when you have that connection with the source of joy himself, Christ Jesus, even when things around you may seem sour, when things around you may be hellwire, when things around you may be stunning upside down, there is this well of inexplicable joy that keeps bubbling on your inside. Even when you go through unpleasant situations, and I remember giving the illustration too, when I experienced the loss of a child, by the way, that is not anything I wish for any woman to go through. It is not a, any experience that any woman should ever, you know, go through. After carrying a child for nine months and then lose the child, it's not something that should happen to anybody. I went through that. At that moment, it looked as if my world had collapsed. It looked as if I would never get over it. It looked as if God had forsaken me. It looked as if I became a subject of mockery. Because people would have been watching and say, Oh, but she's committed to God. She gives her time to God. Why would this happen? But I remember sharing it in church, and that's the truth. Right from the hospital bed, when the news was broken to me that I lost the child, there is this unexplainable joy that welled up from my inside that I burst into singing praises. To the human mind or to the ordinary man that may have seen crazy, that may have seen, seemed like something that was abnormal. It was indeed abnormal because when you operate in the spirit, you will do abnormal things in the eyes of the carnal man. There was this joy that welled up on my inside. Even though the tears were flowing, that joy was deeply seated. And I began to sing praise and to give God thanks. I said, Lord, I thank you. I know that you allowed this to happen. You will give me the grace to go through it. My dear brothers and sisters, I'm not by any means, in any way, shape or form, telling you that it was a pleasant experience, but God saw me through. And today I can stand anywhere to encourage any lady going through such, because I've been there and that spirit of rejoicing took me through and the spirit of joy took me through. Imagine if I didn't have a connection with that source of joy. I don't know where I would have been today. And so the joy we are talking about that is connected to the word rejoicing and for you to remain rejoicing evermore, you have to be connected to that source of joy. It takes a joyful heart to be able to give thanks to God at all times. Where we just read said rejoice evermore, it takes a joyful heart to be able to give thanks at all times. It takes that joy that is inexplicable seated in your spirit man for you to be able to rejoice evermore. When you look at verse 18, First Thessalonians where we read, when you look at verse 18, the Bible clearly tells us that we should give God thanks at all times. Look at what the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 
and verse 18 where we just read he says in everything give thanks he says for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you I tell you it takes the Spirit of God for you to give thanks in all things how can a sane woman give thanks when she has just been told that a child she carried for 40 weeks had died in the name of stillbirth how can a sane woman give thanks how can a sane man give thanks you walk into your place of work in the morning and they tell you say mr john we are sorry your services are no longer required in this establishment how can such a man give thanks how can you give thanks when you hate God clearly in that ministry and the more you try the more it seems the ministry is dwindling how can you give thanks in such situation but I know how my dear brothers and sisters it is through the help of the Spirit of God and so the Bible says give thanks at all times it did not just stop there he didn't give us, it wasn't just like an ab ab admonition. It says, because it is the will of God. Hey, my dear brothers and sisters, that tells me that when you do not rejoice evermore, when you do not give thanks at all times, it means that you are operating outside the will of God. I didn't say that. That's what the Spirit of God says. Joy is not affected by pleasant things that happen around us. Quickly look at what the Bible says in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 10. We are looking at the subject matter, rejoice evermore. Rejoice evermore. Look at what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 10. It says, as sorrowful, follow me this morning, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, <laughs> as poor, yet making rich. As having nothing and yet possessing all things. In other, thing, in other words, for you to be able to live in this life of rejoicing evermore, you have to be able to call those things that be not as though they were. Look what the Bible says. It says, as sorrowful. Even when things around you are pointing, every arrow around your life pointing to being sorrowful, being sad, the Bible says, still rejoice in the midst of it. So this rejoicing we are talking about is not affected by the things that happen around you. It's not affected by the things that happen or do not happen about around you. Let's quickly see again what the Bible says in the book of James chapter 1 and verse 2 and then we'll, we'll move on. Look at what the Bible says in James chapter 1 and verse 2. It says, my brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations. Count it all joy. When things happen around you that the enemy wants you to sit back and question God and ask him, God, if really you are God, how come this happening to me? Have you not seen in life when it seems as if all the bad things are happening to the good people? And the not so good people, quote and unquote, seem to be having everything just so in their favor, seem to be having everything going smoothly. But the Bible says, when you find yourself in situations that you could clearly call temptations, <laughs> it says, count it all joy. It says, rejoice at all times. Because if you read further down, it will tell you the reason why. Because God is standing behind you. So my dear brothers, my dear sisters, rejoice evermore. You cannot rejoice evermore if your relationship with the Holy Spirit is strained. Joy is communicated to the Spirit. A carnal man cannot catch this spirit of rejoicing. You just don't have what it takes to connect. I remember that I preached a message years back on this channel when I talked about you plugging into the socket that produces electricity from God. I remember using that illustration. That you are the one who have the plug and you have to plug it right into the correct socket for you to be able to tap the amount of you know electricity that you would need to operate whatever appliances you want to operate and so a carnal mind does not have the plug to go into that socket of joy 
let me tell you what the Bible says. Look at what it says in 1 Corinthians as we begin to look at wrapping up today. Look at what the Bible says in, 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 in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and, and verse 14. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14. Talking about the fact that a carnal mind cannot grasp this rejoicing we are talking about. Cannot grasp the spirit of joy we are talking about because they don't have what it takes to connect. Look at what it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14. It says, but the natural mind receiveth not the things of the spirit of God. It says, for they are foolishness unto him, because they are spiritually discerned. As I wrap up today, my dear brothers and sisters, the spirit of rejoicing can only be grasped through the spirit. It cannot be connected to by the carnal mind or the natural mind. So in order for you to be able to rejoice all times as it is the will of God, you must, it is a must, have that plug that is called the spirit man, that is called the regenerated spirit for you to be able to plug into the socket of joy and tapping into this ability to rejoice evermore. Dear friends, I will hang up here today and we'll come back next time to continue looking at this subject matter, rejoicing or rejoice evermore. I want you to know something. The plan of God for you is that you be in joy, that you rejoice continually. He does not want to see you crying. He does not want to see you in pain. He does not want to see you broken down and it seems that everything you lay your hands on are not working. He wants to see you prosper. He wants to see you rejoice. He wants to see you elevated. No wonder the Bible says, you know, it says that, Beloved, I wish that above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. It says that thou mayest prosper. You know the beautiful thing? There was no limitation to that word prosper. It means that God's will is for you to prosper on every side and the devil knows that the fastest way to tap into this house of prosperity is when your joy is untampered with are you going to let him i leave that as a food of food for thought for you as i leave and as i come back next time i want you to be confident and be full of joy knowing that they that are on your side are more than they that are on the other side and until i come back next time shalom enter through the narrow gate for wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate, and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. I am Pastor Bridget Ogbefo, inviting you to join me every Friday at 6 a.m. on the Tobago Inspirational Network for Gateway to Life, where we explore the Word of God through the help of the Spirit of God.